Welcome to the Wolverine Digest Podcast, the best spot for objective and authentic coverage of Michigan athletics. If you want open dialogue, honest opinions, and in-depth coverage of the maize and blue, this is the podcast for you. And now, here's your host, Brandon Brown, joined as always by Chris Breitler. I'm just going to start by saying go blue. Here we are. Here we are on a Monday night, just trying to, you know, I think tonight, Chris... I think tonight's going to be getting back to basics a little bit. We're going to get back to basics a little bit tonight. And if uh, if you're curious about what I mean, we're going to do a little TFG. We're going to do a little burning questions. Certainly going to talk about what's going on with Michigan football. Might throw a little basketball in there. We'll see. We'll see. I might I might leave the show for 10 minutes and have Chris talk about basketball again. <laughs> um, well, I really like the way they dribble the ball personally. We uh, we we certainly don't have a, uh, a shortage of things to talk about at this point. I was looking. Yeah, Michigan plays Penn State tomorrow in basketball. I was checking out when their next game was. But um, yeah, it's going to be fun, man. We haven't done a TFG in a while. We haven't done burning questions in a little while. I think we did one not too long ago, and they, it's always good to go over go over uh, some things like that. It gives us both the chance to kind of answer each other. Then we can re- rebuttal. We can get the fans involved as well, as always. So if you guys have questions, feel free to throw them up as we are in the off season now, so we're, we're open to all that. But it, it is always cool to get back to some of the segments that we did throughout the season and help us uh, help us stay on track a little bit. But we need a little structure in our lives. A little bit. I mean, yeah, we, you know. We don't have to be too serious about what we're doing here, but I mean, you had you had a uh, you had a steak sandwich today with uh, with Cheetos <laughs> on it, so I don't know how structured we are over here. But listen, Chris and I got together today in person in the flesh. Do you wanna do you wanna talk about talk at all about what was going on and what? Yeah, what was- well, I'll just say this: we we scouted we scouted the venue. Um, you know, the interview with with JJ Andrell Donovan set to take place next week. We were scouting the venue down in Ann Arbor and, and, you know, wanted to take a look at what things were going to look like. We're happy with it. And, you know, afterwards we went to get a bite to eat. Now, Brandon took it a step further and getting a bite to eat. I didn't know that there were going to be Cheetos on the sandwich. I didn't even know that that was a menu option. That mm-hmm. just shows what I know. Yes. Yeah, Stop by lefties. If anybody's ever been there, fantastic organization. And we found this out, dude. Chris is left-handed in most way. Just about, do you do everything left-handed? Every, well. All right. Uh. For the most part, <laughs> I, uh, you addicted to sex, the sex addiction or something. I, I, that's not what I meant. I just was thinking like, so in lefties, if you've never been there, they have a whole wall of famous left-handed people, and like LeBron James is up there, and uh, there was one other guy who was up there that I didn't realize was a lefty, or maybe you looked it up. Russell Westbrook is also left-handed, Westbrook, but he's yeah. well right-handed. That's that's more along most the geniuses. Well. Most geniuses are like Einstein. Einstein, Einstein, you know, a lot, a lot of the great ones. A lot of uh, Jerry, the Seinfeld. great one, the great one. Wayne Gretzky himself is a lefty. Right, Jerry right. Seinfeld. Um, I mean, there was a bunch of Oprah. Oprah was up on that wall. <laughs> I mean, bro. I mean, know, so. It was never it was a lot of who's who. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, I ordered the Southpaw, which is the name of the sandwich that I got. Comes with steak. Nacho cheese melted on that bad boy and flaming hot Cheetos. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so about that whole structure thing, you know, we, we take structure where we can get it. We're not sponsored by lefties yet, but damn it. Maybe we should be, maybe, maybe we, we should be because I just gave them a plug. So anyway, yeah. all right. Um, going to get into TFG. Oh, let me back up real quick. So yes, we went and checked out the place. I'm pumped about it, dude. I know we talked about it a good bit today. J.J. McCarthy, Andrew Anthony, Donovan Edwards, a full sit-down interview with those dudes. Maybe some other stuff to go along with it. Just just keep, just stay tuned. It's going to be badass, dude. It's I'm a good time to do it. it. I'm looking forward to it. And, yeah, man, good God. Harbaugh coming back, Gaddis leaving. Now we got, you know, arguably three of the biggest pieces of the potential offense next year to be able to uh, talk about all that stuff. So, I'm excited, man. I'm pumped. I hope it comes together as we talked about today with the the managers of the place. It's like we got these three college kids, all very different schedules. Chris doesn't exactly live around the corner. So we're trying to 
logistically get all this stuff lined up and just and make so you happen. guys know it's a lot of work to make it happen it's not like you just you know pick up the phone and, and it all comes right. together so we're you know we've been planning this for weeks now and it looks like it's going to come to fruition next week so we're excited about it and sean they're not actually going to be on it's not going to be live we're doing a pre-recorded thing with them so slightly different approach than when we just would have players come on during the season but it's because of some of the other stuff that we're going to do that we're doing it this way. Still think it's going to be awesome. Still think you guys are really going to enjoy it. And there's some some really cool stuff to come out of it that we haven't quite led on to yet. So keep it keep it tuned in on that. And I think it's going to go over extremely well. Just hope that we can we can get it lined up with these guys and their schedule. That's really all it's going to come kids. down. To. So yeah, these damn kids these days. All right, TFG dude, want to jump right into it? It's been a minute. It's been Let's a hot it. since we yeah. did. TFG action. Let's get right into it. It became a fan favorite. Um, it's been a while since we have done one, but I think it, it's every time you or I does something boneheaded on the pod, somebody will throw TFG up in the comments over there. So yeah. it's on everyone's mind. So this fucking guy, Chris, would you want to go first or do you want me to go first? This yeah. Guy. I mean, I can go first and I'm going to modify it. Guy. I'm going to modify it slightly from, from, from this effing guy to these effing guys. I don't know if it's hey, that world. guy, these guys, those guys. I don't know which guy or guys it is. But whatever happened to the NFL Pro Bowl game, I, I it's it's unwatchable. It's it's unwatchable. And and I look, I get it. I, I've seen people come out and say, hey, these guys, they go hard all year. It's you know, it's 17 games. If they want to just have fun for one weekend, what's the big deal? Look, I get it, but then put them in some skills challenges. Don't have it be like a faux football game where I don't know, man. I just, I watch that product and it is so uninteresting to me. And I feel bad that people pay money for it. So to me, I feel like bring back some competition, man. Let these guys play football. I'm not trying to watch somebody take somebody's head off, but I want to see a good football game between some of the best of what the NFL has to offer. I actually had the exact same thought. I didn't watch one second of the Pro Bowl. I forgot it was even on. I think I was watching. There you go like a random NBA game and I saw some stuff come across Twitter. I'm like, Oh damn, like the, the pro bowls on, first of all, are they still doing it in Hawaii or do they move it? It's not even in Hawaii anymore. I don't think so. That was I have no idea. always, always kind of like cool draw. But anyway, I'm with you, dude. I'm, I want to see, dude, take every quarterback who's not playing in the Super Bowl and have them do a quarterback challenge all the way through Phenomenal. Ball, ball, uh, hardest throw, deepest throw, accuracy stuff. Take the running, do a real fastest guy in the NFL race. Get the, I mean, dude, anybody who watches the NFL can name six or eight of the fastest guys on the field. Line them up and have them Line really them up. shit. Not, not, not like a joking one where like Micah Parsons won the other day and beat Tyree Kill. Stop. Micah Parsons is fast. He's not beating Tyree Kill in a race ever. A hundred times out of a hundred times, he's not winning that race. I would actually be interested in seeing that. I would be interested in seeing that, whereas the Pro Bowl looked like a joke man it, I, I mean like i said i didn't watch one second of it and i'm an nfl junkie man i, I love mean, I, right and i get the whole not wanting to get injured thing it just looked like a, a giant waste of time like to me it all looked pointless like it was a dress rehearsal for for nothing and so you're right line these guys up let's see who's the fastest you know do some interesting things with with accuracy and the quarterbacks you could really if you got a smart group of people together you could come up with some interesting s stuff from a skills challenge standpoint that i think would be a much better product than them watching what what people watched the other day that was i don't know what that was high jump contest vertical contest for your receivers and dbs you could do i was never really like a big fan of the obstacle course thing but if you if you did it right it could be cool to do that with your running backs you could do the bench press contest with the big fell i mean you could do a lot of stuff that would be a lot more interesting to watch than than that so i'm i'm with you dude i think that's a that's a solid this fucking guy tfg plural lots of tfgs and and look it's not the it's not really the player's fault like they're just no. there doing what they're doing but the whole the whole setup and just the organization of it and what's expected and how it kind of goes down is and you know good. what if if there are guys who are you know top tier players that don't want to get injured that's fine but i'll bet there's a lot of guys in the nfl who would love the opportunity to go play in the pro bowl and, and hit somebody and, and make a big play. And so I would rather see guys who are second or third on the depth chart going out there and playing and trying to make a name for themselves rather than what we watched before. It just wasn't fun. It wasn't yeah. interesting. And John, I don't know if it's the same thing you saw. I think JJ Watt said that it was like less intense than an actual walkthrough, like for yeah. a week. Like it's, it was that 
<laughs> it was that bad. It's just people didn't really want to be there going through the motions. Barely. I mean, no tackling, right? I don't think there was hardly any tackling. Uh, just, no uh, tackling, a little two hand touch. Yeah, it was, it was a sad display. All right. So there you go. Mine is this look, fucking guy. I, okay. I oh debated. Boy. Are you going to do I it? I debated long and hard about this. Long, hard, long and hard. You're addicted to sex? A sex addiction or something? I was going to go Jim Harbaugh. I was going to go Jim Harbaugh because of the stuff we've talked about the, over the weekend, Chris, and it's going to be one of the things we get into with our burning questions. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not because he's back. I'm going to give him give him the benefit of the doubt that he's going to do the right thing and make some good moves here and get people in the right position to keep the team rolling because he did it last year. I thought he made a lot of uh, I, a risky. I thought he did a lot of risky things last year, and it all came together in about the perfect way possible. And so I think he deserves some credit for that. But I think he has I think he has blown some things in a pretty big way since the end of December. And we're going to get into that. But he's not my TFG. I'm going to go for much lower hanging fruit. And I'm going to go with this fucking guy, Urban Meyer. First of all, I hate him. He, he's a he's just a he's just a dick bag. I don't know what else to. He, he's the worst. He's the worst guy. And apparently. Like, you would think he'd have a lot of other things to be taking care of, things to be mending, maybe chilling out, maybe spending some time with his wife at home. I, I'm I'm not the kind of guy to go at that kind of situation and, and say, but, like, when, when you're caught on camera doing what you're doing and you act how you act and it's been everywhere, and then there's a report that comes out that he's just bopping around the Ohio State buildings like things are just honky-dory and talking about that team up north, I just... I just can't stand the guy. I is literally he, can't stand him. Is he living at the facility now? Is there a chance that that Mrs. Meyer <laughs> threw him out and he is funny. now he is now living at the Ohio State facilities? I mean, it's weird that he's just walking around there. What is poking, he doing? Poking his head into random offices and giving people advice. It's a it's a strange scene down there in Columbus. It's just weird, man. So they they so if you didn't see it, I put a story up on it. Real, real TMZ kind of bullshitty type of thing. I don't care. I saw it and I was like, can you believe this guy? Can you believe this guy? So the Ohio State hires a new defensive coordinator, Jim Knowles, the guy from Oklahoma State. He's in his office. Urban Meyer's popping around, like I said, just hanging out, just living the dream. Sticks his head in there. Make sure you beat that team up north. And that's like he quoted that. Like this, the new DC went on the record and said that that's what Urban Meyer said, and then just walked on. And I'm like, dude, shut the hell up. Go Way somewhere. Later. Go away. Just, just, just go away. He kicked Michigan's ass seven times. I get it, but dude, you're a clown. It's time to. It's time to go away. It's time to go somewhere. So. That's this fucking guy. That's it. I, I, he's just permanent. You're not going to get a lot of pushback. I don't think we had, we've had some other, like we've had some other like permanent candidates for TFG. We had, I mean, Scott Frost has been thrown in there quite a few times. Scott um, Frost is sort of faded into the background here. And, and, guy. You know, seemed like there was a lot of heat on him for a while. And, you know, I don't know. Thanks to Jim. Jim Harbaugh's taking up a lot of the attention for some of these guys. So <laughs> Scott Frost, Homer Simpson, Homer Simpson into the bushes, like just <laughs> right. you know that meme. He just sinks back into the shrubs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, there hasn't been a, what, what's there to talk about with him. But dude, Urban Meyer. I just every time I see his face, I just want to punch him, dude. He just I don't know, man. Anyway, I, I, I thought that was a layup. That was a layup. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go full in on Harbaugh. I think we're going to get into some of that with one of my burning questions. I don't know what you're going to come with on your questions, but I know it's going to come up on one of mine. And so I didn't want to, I didn't want to go at him, you know, during the TFG section, because like, honestly, dude, like there's a pretty big group of people that I think are a little bit bummed out with how it played out with Harbaugh. Not that he's back, but just by how it looked, what it's been like, what it's resulted in, you know, in some, in some ways, and just the overall vibes of it. So I, I think there's merit in talking about it right there. But I don't know. T would let me ask you, Chris. Would TFG Jim Harbaugh been a little strong? Was is would that have been too much? I don't know that it would have been too much. I just think people are so over talking about him and what's been going on. And like I think after after it was announced he was coming back, I think everybody was kind of like, "Oh, thank God this is over." It, even you and I were like, "Now we can move forward and we can talk about other things." And then. 
Josh Gaddis leaves and on yeah. his way out, you know, it, it so happens there's a text message that comes out and now there's a lot more to talk about, at least for a couple of days to fill the news cycle. So I think people are just exhausted by the whole thing. I think they're, they're eager to see, you know, what they're doing to prepare for 2022 and not all of this bullshit that, that we've been yeah. caught up in for the last 40 some days. This is a great way to sum it up right here. Jeff, first of all, thank you for joining us from Shanghai. That's unbelievable. Yeah. He said Jimmy would have qualified for TFG this week, but Urban Liar, worst human being. There's no doubt. Fair. I mean, yeah. like, Harbaugh's not doing anything wrong. He's not He's not being a skis ball out there. Like I I don't really love the way he did things or is is you know what what the fallout has been, but like he's not hurting anybody. He's he's not he's not out there being a morally bad dude. He's not um, out on the dance floor uh I don't know. Did that? I, I heard it. No, I, I heard it. Do we have a? I wish I do. I, I don't have a noise like that. Probably need to get one. <laughs> I'll I'll find a I'll find a hole popping. But, but you would never think you would need a noise like that. <laughs> thanks a lot, Urban. Oh, thanks a lot, Urban Meyer. All right, here we go. I'm just gonna. We're just gonna go right into it, dude. You ready? Let's do it. Let's get it going. Burning question. I was on mute. Okay, now I'm off. Everybody's cockles. Get them warmed up. Hot, hot cockles. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll, I'll get us. I'll start us off. And uh, all right, you and I talked a little bit about this the other day when it came out. You know, I'm going to paraphrase what was said because I don't have it exactly in front of me. But basically, one of Michigan's actually Michigan's all-time leading receiver, Ooh. number one, Braylon Edwards, yep. came out with some pretty strong words the other day. Basically, said. You know, this is the result of selfish, selfishness and bad communication. I think that was right after, you know, Gaddis had announced he was leaving, basically saying that, you know, what happened with Jim Harbaugh and, and now Gaddis leaving, this is what happens when, when you don't communicate and when you do bad things. And then he alluded that, you know, the next phase to come would be losing some players. And so I'm going to ask you flat out, was Braylon off base in what he said? Not, no, not really. I mean, he he brings it in a way that you just kind of go like, ah, come on, man. Like, tone it down a bit. Um, and it, it has seemed like he's had a little bit of an axe to grind for a while. But I know I know for a fact that assistant coaches were left in limbo. And they, they didn't know what they were supposed to do. They didn't know if they were going to be in Ann Arbor. They didn't know if they needed to worry about their housing situations or their kids in school for next fall or this or that or the other because Jim Harbaugh was out there trying to figure things out for himself. I don't know. We know for a fact that the players were not kept in the loop. They thought he, when he got on that plane, he was gone and the players thought he was done. They were already talking about who the next head coach might be. They, they were already thinking like, we're going to be good. We're here for Michigan. We're all in. We're going to be, we're going to be fine because we, we were shown last year, what player led teams can look like and what kind of leadership needs to be there. And so, and then he just comes back and now Gaddis is gone. And now everyone's like, what the hell is going on? Dude, I had two former players, two former players, one that played for Jim Harbaugh that texted me and was just like, cause I, I put up that tweet that said Michigan football looks like a soap opera right now. And he texted me a copy of that tweet that I said and said, he said, Brandon, you are so spot on. He's like, this is crazy. What's happening right now? He was like, we just won the Big Ten. He put it in all caps, and he said, what the hell is happening in that place right now? And so I don't think Braylon was off base. I think his delivery was poor. I think the the wording that he used and his, his anger showed through in his words. I'm not really sure why he has that, but he's he's had that for a while. Uh, but but I don't think his like his sentiment or his thoughts were – like off base. Cause I think there's a lot of people thinking that right that way right now. Uh, yeah, I, I would agree. And I, and I saw that a lot of people jumped on him on Twitter, obviously for what he said. And you know, he's out of line, he's got an ax to grind and, and you and I talked about it before we got on the show. I think we talked about it yesterday, but I do think there's, there's some truth into what he's saying, but you're right. The, the delivery is so harsh that I think most of the people out there who, who bleed maize and blue aren't going to be willing to hear that. And you could see that on social media, but if you look at the context of what he's saying, the substance of what he's saying, I think there's a lot of validity to that. And now whether or not that ultimately leads to players departing or whatever the case may be, that remains to be seen. But I mean, he was a big part of that program. And I think when he has something to say, you know, at if you don't like what the guy has to say, don't listen to him. But I, he certainly has a right to speak his mind. And I mean, he got a lot of heat for it. And, and when I read it, I, 
I didn't think he was too far off base. It was a little bit harsh, but I think he made a fair point. Yeah, and there were a couple of people in the comments there saying he loves Michigan. He's just not happy with what is happening. He's passionate. He's fired up about it. I, Yeah, absolutely he is. This, look, look. <laughs> if, you do, if you don't need to see any further evidence about how people can get upset when you talk about Jim Harbaugh, there it is. That's Braylon freaking Edwards, people. That's Braylon Edwards. The same people that are trashing Braylon Edwards for how he's talking about Jim Harbaugh right now would have broke down into tears on their knees if he had touched their hand at the big house when he was wearing the number one jersey. And now he's in the media and he's got an opinion and people think he's a clown. It's ridiculous, man. Like I said, a little harsh with the language. I don't think he was off base. I don't think he was off base. And look, man, if I know some stuff about people being left in the dark and not getting great communication, I guarantee Braylon Edwards knows more. And so if he says that, he got that directly from somebody and he means it. So uh, that, that's what I'll say. All right. This is kind of in the same wheelhouse here, Chris. And I mean, it, it's because of the communication and because of the, if you want to call it selfishness and the, and the, and the deception or whatever. Then, again, those words feel a little strong, but like yeah. that is what was going on for the better part of a month. People had no idea what was going to happen. And then Jim Harbaugh just comes back like, Hey guys, you ready for some football? Like it was, you know, whatever I'm, I'm back. I'm ready. Let's go. If the momentum and the positive energy and the vibes surrounding the program were at a 10 after they lost to Georgia, and I understand that losing to Georgia was, like, not awesome, but you're still at that level. You still just played in the playoff. You still have, uh, you know, less than a month ago beaten Ohio State, won a Big Ten title. So if that's a 10, if that's what a 10 feels like, where is the program at right now on that 1 through 10 scale? I mean, it's hard to say, obviously just speculating, but I, I've got to imagine it's probably down to a seven a little bit. I okay. mean, you, you, you have to understand that, or you have to imagine that losing your, your defensive coordinator, your offensive coordinator, and having your head coach look at other jobs in the NFL, that's just not normal course of business after such a successful season. And look, I, I know people out there say, look, it happens at Alabama or it happens at Ohio State. Whenever there's success, there's turnover. And that might be true. But it doesn't like look this. like this. Yeah, not it, like doesn't, this. it doesn't play out like this. And so I, I understand people want to convince themselves that, oh, this is just normal course of business. This isn't. And and I think to, to insinuate that there has been no impact on the football program at all would be disingenuous. I'd say they probably come down a little bit, but there's certainly time to make it up. I mean, you got, you know, how many months until spring ball? I think you're spot on with your analysis. I'd say eight. I'd go a little higher because because those other things still happen, right? You still won a Big Ten title. You still beat Ohio State. You still played in the playoff. It just doesn't feel the same as it should. I said this to you when we were hanging out today. I'm like, Michigan just did all those things, right? Beat Ohio State, pounded Iowa, won a Big Ten championship, played in the playoffs. Yes, got beat pretty soundly by Georgia, but still did all of those things. And here we are. It feels like every other freaking year where you lose to Ohio State at the end of the year, you go play in a bowl game and you lose, and then you limp into the offseason and sign a pretty good class. It feels like it feels like that's what happened again. <laughs> and that's not even close to what happened. So it's 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 crazy. And I saw someone say, like, when I look ahead at next year's schedule, I pop back up to a nine. I, I'm with you, man. There could be a it could be an absolute shit show going on in Ann Arbor, and Michigan could probably sleepwalk to 10 and 2 next year. And so that that Michigan gets out to 3 and 0, 4 and 0, maybe 5 and 0 if they can beat Iowa at Kinnick and thinks it, it's no one's going to care. No one's going to care at all about who's wearing the headset now, who's calling the plays because if you get to 5 and 0 and then you're 6 and 0 and goodness man, if they're 11 and 0 going to Columbus at the end of the year, which is not crazy, it, it, who cares? Well, I but think right now in February, it feels like all that all that stuff, all that momentum that was built up has kind of been wasted a little bit and squandered. Yeah, well, I think Chris made a good point from Barstool when we had him on, what was it, Friday? Oh, you yep. know, but look at look at how quickly everybody forgot the first six years after what happened in year seven. I mean, it, it doesn't take much for this fan base to sort of rally around. And so, you know, it, it was a turbulent 30, 35, 40 days, but they've gotten over it. And I think based on, you know, the movement that's going to happen internally, there's not going to be a lot of change. It's going to be a lot of the same faces. And I think, you know, I think they're going to be okay. But 
going back to the original point, I just don't see how you can spend the last month going through something like this and how it, come out of it with it having no impact on your program whatsoever. That just seems not plausible to me. Yep, I hear you. All right, so on that same note, let me ask you this. And I think I think I know where you're going to go. I think I know where most people are going to go, but I'll ask you anyway. What is the bigger loss? Michigan lost their OC. They lost their DC. What's the biggest loss for Michigan? Is it Mike McDonald or Josh Gaddis? Great question. I think it's Mike McDonald. I think it's Mike McDonald for how bad the off or how bad the defense looked before he got there and then how good it was last year coupled with all the talent that they're losing off of that unit. I think it's McDonald. I don't think it's close. I think if Gaddis had been back next year, I think the offense was going to be really freaking good. And I think whoever they move into that spot, it's still going to be really freaking good. And look, on the flip side, if McDonald was still the DC, the defense might be a lot worse next year, like a lot worse. I I, I don't think, you know, but um, uh, automatically whoever the defensive coordinator is, is going to be held to those standards and everyone's going to be, be like, God, look how good Mike McDonald was. But, like, don't forget about how good Aiden Hutchinson was and David Ojaba was and Daxon Hill and Brad Hawkins and even Josh Ross, Chris Hinton. I mean, like, they're losing a ton off of that unit. But I think if, if you're going to break it down to just person to person, I do think I, I think it's McDonald. I think – I mean, I remember saying this when, when Gaddis won the Broyles Award. I'm like, that's cool. And Michigan's offense was great. You know, Haskins, 20 rushing touchdowns, broke a record, all that stuff. The running game was dominant. I don't even know if he's the best assistant coach on the staff. I remember thinking that. And, you know, now that McDonald's gone and Gaddis is gone, it feels like McDonald's the bigger loss. Yeah, I I agree. I think McDonald's the bigger loss. And the reason why I say that is because Gaddis has been here for a few years. And I, I don't know what it is. And, and I know that – and I don't know if you're going to be able to – allude to the conversations that you've had over the last 24 hours, but there has been belief that, you know, Jim Harbaugh has had his hand in the offense and that it really wasn't Josh Gaddis that was calling the plays or it really was Josh and it wasn't Jim or whatever the case was, but whatever, whoever was calling it, I've never liked what this offense looked like. But with Josh Gaddis in town as the offensive coordinator, to me, it always seems like this high end sports car that's not firing on all cylinders or you're not driving it the right way. And so when I heard that he was leaving, I was surprised. I didn't see it coming, but I'm not upset by that at all. I'm, I'm actually excited for somebody else to step into that role and see if we can finally get everything out of these guys. I mean, we talk about this all the time, Brandon. Michigan gets athletes. They get talent coming through the door. The problem is it just doesn't feel like they get utilized. And so if it's, you know, if it's Matt Weiss, if it's Sharon Moore, if it's somebody else, I don't care who it is. Look at this roster. Look at who you have offensively. Th these guys should be putting up points in 2022. They should be moving the ball in 2022. And I hope whoever fills that role, you know, is, is going to see what they have there. This is ba basing the basing, uh, Starting with the baseline that J.J. McCarthy is going to be the starting quarterback next year, if he doesn't throw 30 touchdown passes next year to set a new Michigan record in a season, that's a failure. That's an offensive failure. J.J. McCarthy needs to throw at least 30 touchdowns in 2022, period. And that's not a and lot. That's not even a lot. It's not. But the fact that the record at Michigan is 25 is laughable. I mean, that's laughable. And it needs to be... It needs to be better next year. I would I would say that if Gaddis was still here, I would say that if they hired Joe Brady, I would say that if they brought in, you know, the most prolific offensive coordinator in the history of the sport, it needs that needs to be your baseline. When you've got a talent like that and the receiving room that they have, that needs to be the baseline for 2022. Right. Speaking of Josh Gaddis, there's going to be a couple things in here about him, obviously, as the, the main story over the last couple of days. Was there something wrong with what Josh Gaddis texted to his wide receivers? Was it was it wrong what he said? I mean, obviously that's been put out there in public now. That was never the intention of that text message. That was supposed to be between him and his guys. You know, blame a little bit on the on the player who let it slip out, and then blame the media for running it as a story when it wasn't given directly to them. Um, was there something wrong with what he said? Well. Before I go, that was my third question. So we'll just address that <laughs> right. here. Um, yeah, I, I do think there was. And and I, you know, obviously that message wasn't supposed to get out, right? That was a message to his players. He thought it was going to be private for whatever reason it got out. And you can think about that however you want. But some of what was said in there, I just feel like he, he took it maybe a step too far. 
you know, you, you can, you can explain that circumstances are out of your control or you just don't feel like it's a good fit or whatever the case is, but it really did seem like it came off as sour grapes. Like I'm just not wanted or I'm just not this, or I'm just not this. And I need this. And if you ever need me, you can, you know, I don't know, man, to me, it was a bad look. I think the message could have come off a lot better. And, and I think as people read it, it just seemed like sour grapes. It's unfortunate that it got out, but Hey man, that's the era we live in. And, and again, it just goes to show if there was shit going on, you know, during the 30 days when Harbaugh had told somebody he was coming back, that text would have gotten out. We would have seen right. Right, right, right. Things we talked about many times. So full disclosure, I talked to Josh Gaddis for a while yesterday. I exchanged many, many, many messages. With Sources? Him. Yeah, I got a couple. Whatever. It's fine. I, you know, I don't think it was wrong. I don't, I don't think it was wrong what he said because it wasn't supposed to be a public message. It was supposed to be it was supposed to be on a private level between him and his players that he knows very personally. And uh, it, 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 this, it sounds like it was taken out of context because he was saying, basically it was kind of like a life lesson type of thing that got taken to be much more specific, I think. That, that's how I feel. I don't feel like in all the things I talked to him about, I just didn't get the sense of what that text message was made to be at all, like at all. And so it just is a bummer, dude. It's like you said, that's the world we live in these days. Like, dude, look, man, if, if, if I just gave my phone to somebody and said, go ahead, take any text you want in there and publish it, you'd never see me again. I would be, I would be done on that day. And that's probably the case for every person everywhere. I'm not saying that it's that it's right and that you could just say whatever you want in a text message to your friend, but but that was not supposed to be put in an article for the masses to read. And so because of that, I, I don't think it was wrong. I did not get the sense that I did not get the sense that he was trying to take a direct shot at Michigan. I do feel like he was a little bit hurt by maybe how some things played out while it looked like Jim Harbaugh was leaving and then maybe what would have happened had he left. But at the end of the day, he's also getting a big raise to go up, to go to Miami. And I do think that he's going to have more control there over his offense than he did at Michigan. And I think those are two big selling points. And after my damn car got stuck in the driveway at the end of the, in a big pile of snow today, I wish I was moving to Miami. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, all right, man. Well, I'll skip. I'll skip number three since you know. So that's that's interesting. We view that a little bit differently, and I know a little bit. Look, I mean, you know, look. you and I, you and I talked after you know, as you were exchanging messages with him, and as you were telling me kind of his side of things. I remember we said it like, well, that doesn't sound at all like that text message. It sounds like you know a miscommunication. But unfortunately, you're right. It wasn't meant to be seen by everybody. It is seen by everybody, and the message itself, I just. I don't think looks all that great. Rob, my my point is that I don't I don't think he meant it to his players how it's now being presented in the media and to the public eye. That's that's part of my argument. I agree. If I could, you know, if I was if there was like an undo button, I might go to him and say like, "Eh, let's take that one line out right there, dude, and like and leave that out." And that might have been better received. But I, but that's part of my point is he was saying it to a group of young men that he feels very close with with somewhat of a life lesson in there that I don't think was necessarily like a shot at Michigan on the way out. And look, I'm not like a Josh, Ad Josh Gaddis advocate. I, I've been real critical of him before. Like I thought his offense flat out blew for a couple years. I'm not like trying to go to bat for him. I just feel like, I just feel like it was a little bit, it was a little bit blown out of proportion and, and pretty out of context given who he was saying it to. That's all. That's all I'm yeah. saying. Fair take. Certainly not egregious. I mean, I don't hate the man for the right. text. I just, yeah. I thought it was a little bit of a bad look and, you know, leave it at it's that. Not the best look. I, right. can, I can jump on board with saying it's not the best look, but I, I do think it's been blown out of proportion. All right. Number four, I'm going to move on to number four since we had the same question for number three. And this is something that I think people that haven't talked a lot about since, you know, you have the big name with uh, McDonald and Gaddis, but how big of a loss was Osborne? Osborne is on his way to Baltimore. He's going to go out, you know, at, at the Harbaugh, John Harbaugh just can't stop taking people from the <laughs> university of Michigan. I know he gave us McDonald, but he's, he's taking them back. Why would he do that? Chris? Uh, let me ask you, why would he do that? 
I don't know. It's so bizarre. It's so almost like he thought his brother was going to the pros. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Let me ask you this. How big of a loss is Osborne, not just in terms of what he did as a defensive coach, but on the recruiting trail? The younger guys really seem to relate to him. I know that Upshaw said he was one of the funniest guys on the coaching staff, very relatable, made things easier. Was that a big loss, or is that something that is just a blip on the radar? I'd file it somewhere slightly between those. I don't think it's quite a blip because it looked like he was an ascending guy. And usually when you start to hear about an ascending guy, they eventually ascend. I mean, that's that's how it works in the coaching world. I don't think it's a huge loss, though. I mean, I, I don't think any of the guys on the team are like, oh, man, dude, how am I going to stay here now with, with Osborne gone? I, I don't see see it that way. He was, he was just an analyst. He wasn't, you know, he – Sean Newell leaves – if he's so, so valuable, then he becomes your D-line coach. And he didn't. You know, you bring in Mike Elston, that's probably an upgrade over Nua. I, I would I would say that if they had brought in Osborne, that would have been a downgrade from Nua, even though he's doing a lot of things well and progressing through his coaching career and looks to be on his way up. I think it's, a sl- I think it's slightly more than a blip, but in the grand scheme, I, I really don't think Michigan will feel it at all. I, I just don't. That's not a knock on Osborne. I just, given what he was doing, his role, his age, his level of experience, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah. And I was a little bit surprised when it started to pop up on social media that he might be in the running for that DC position or once, once a new left, I was DL, a little bit DL or D, D, defensive yeah. line coach position. I was a little bit surprised by that, but you're right. I mean, I, I was surprised that he was going to go to the league. I was surprised he was going to Baltimore. I think I've been surprised with a lot that's happened with him and, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in the NFL, but you're right. I don't think it's going to be too big of a, a hit on this team. I do wonder though, you know, so much was made of the culture and the vibe in the locker room. When you start to lose guys like that, I wonder how much that takes a hit because we obviously saw culture, locker room, and energy and brotherhood. That pays huge dividends during a football season because that was the biggest difference in 2022 as far as I could tell. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a fair point. That's a fair point, the culture thing. If he was that well-liked just as a, excuse me, just as a personality, a funny dude, like, I hear people say like, oh, he's the funniest guy in the world. And like the hard ass old school me is like, I don't want funny guys on my coaching staff. I want where's Osborne. Yeah, I want hard asses, dude. I want people to get in, you know, get on somebody when they mess up. And But you're right, though, dude. I mean, having some positive energy around there is important. We obviously saw the effects of that last year. More communication, more open lines of talking between coaches and players, more input from the players like that. That's important. But again, just because of his role and what he actually did, his age experience, not the not the biggest deal in the world. But right, so, we'll so, see. We'll see what so, happens with his career. I mean, dude, he's in the NFL now. That's pretty big. I mean, good so, for him. So you don't so you don't like him. So you don't like him is what you're saying. That's Hate fine. him. Uh, wish he never was here. It's fine. Can't stand his face. Not a fan of Osborne. Got nope. it. But uh, yeah, no, good for him, man. We'll see what he does in the NFL. I mean, if he ends up, you know, climbing and climbing and climbing, and he's a DL coach in the league someday, like you'll have to say, like, damn. You know, he was identified early and was a part of that staff, and there's a reason why people liked him. So, anyway, there you go. Um, So, right now, Michigan has an opening at offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator. We've talked about what we think is probably going to happen to OC, which is Matt Weiss, Sharon Moore as co-coordinators. Mike Hart also involved in the running game. I put a story up about that yesterday. You can go check that out. Uh, Honestly, haven't heard a lot about uh, uh, on the defensive side. I mean, I like – Chris and I both will say this. We're not exactly like out there sleuthing for information, like all the time trying to break news and do things like we've kind of settled into a slightly different role than that. But I do know some people and I've asked around a little bit. I just haven't got much just flat out. Haven't got much on the DC front. Um, So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but I will ask it to you this way, Chris, you can, you can look at it specifically right here, right now with this DC OC situation or big picture, because we've talked about this before. Would you rather that Jim Harbaugh hires coordinators from within or if he should go outside of the program? Again, micro, OCDC specifically right now, macro, anytime you hire a coach, what what do you think is the best move? 
I like the idea of bringing somebody from the outside in, because I think when you start to promote from within too much, you start sniffing your own brand. And then that's how you get to a point place where things just don't change. Everyone loves their own brand. Right. And you get stuck in your own ways. And I think somebody coming in from the outside, you know, and getting a new perspective can really do a lot for a program. And so for me, uh, I get, I get the benefit of having continuity and, and the same guys who have been in the fight and been in the war with you. But I also think there's a lot to be said for new blood. And again, Go back to what Jim Harbaugh did in the offseason in 2021. The new blood injected into that program made one hell of a difference. Unfortunately, he's lost some of that, so you got to get it back. But if, if you can bring in somebody from the outside, I always think that that's going to help your program grow more. I'm with you. I mean, it kind of goes back again to like the big picture thing that I always have a problem with. And there's so many Michigan fans who are like, yeah, get a Michigan man. I'm like, no, no, go get the best guy. If you limit it, if you limit it in any way, that's stupid. I don't want that at any, any time, at any level, for any job, for anywhere. I understand the continuity. I do. But in college where you have players moving in and out, and it's like a three-year revolving door with your players, and it's going to be maybe a new – uh, a new starting quarterback next year and a new receiver stepping up and you lost Haskins and a brand new defense. Like I just want the best guy, go get the best guy who you have been just incredibly impressed by that is doing something that you want to have happen at your team. That's what I, that's what I think. Go get the best guy available, <clears throat> target who you want, make him tell, you no, and then move on to the next option. So I, I'm with you. I, even this year right now, Matt Weiss, Sharon Moore might be amazing at offensive coordinator, but if you've got an opening right now and there's a dude out there who you think is in- incredible at calling plays and putting up points and putting guys in a position to, s- to succeed, go get that guy. If you truly, truly think that Matt Weiss and Sharon Moore are better than anybody else out there, great, then give it to them. But I, I don't think you should be limited to that because they're already right there. That's if right. they were, wouldn't Gaddis have been gone sooner? I, guess I mean, that's maybe where I'm know, at with that. You know, if, if you, you could got, look at it in a lot of different ways, like yeah. no one else is trying to hire Matt Weiss as an OC. I, I mean, I'm not trying it. to bang on him a little bit, but I'm just saying, like, if you think there's someone out there better, you're Michigan, bro. Go hire him. And if he says no, then you move on. That's what I think. It's a business. Is what you're saying? Hundred percent. Right. All right. Final question for me, and it's it's pretty straightforward. Obviously, now that he's back, or some people get pissed off about that. He never left. Now that he's going to remain oh, in he, Ann Arbor. Oh, he left. <laughs> oh, he left. Well, well, now that he will remain in Ann Arbor, Brandon, do you take Jim Harbaugh at his word that this was the last time? Or do you think at some point, whether it's next year, two years, three years from now, Michigan fans will find themselves – Turning on their computers, looking at their phone, only to find more Jim Harbaugh to the NFL news. Unless a team absolutely falls or absolutely is absolutely in love with him or falls in love with him and they have a head coaching opening, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. He didn't get an offer this year. He ain't never getting one. That's it. He can want it all he wants, dude. He ain't going unless somebody brings him in. And he got a chance this year close and couldn't close. That's it. It's over. It's over. He's almost 60. I don't know if his his stock is ever going to be this high again. We'll see. You know, I mean, if he if they go out again next year, beat Ohio State, win a Big Ten, make it back to the playoff. I mean, it's going to be right there. The same kind of interest, the same kind of success, the same kind of stock high, you know, narrative and story. But I think it's a wrap. And I think I don't it's not him. I think he might have had a realization like they don't like they don't like me. They just don't want me up there anymore. It's I mean, I'm done, bro. I'm I'm coming back to so, Michigan. So you you take that. him at his word. You take him at his word that he is done chasing chasing that that Super Bowl. I mean, I'd like to go chase and tackle the cheetah, dude. They run 80 miles an hour. It ain't happening, bro. You can want something all you want, dude. But it, I mean, well, but you weren't standing five feet away from a cheetah with your gun, just ready to take it out. You know, he was there. He was in the fight. That's why he's got the itch. At the doorstep. I think it's a wrap, bro. I think Harbaugh yeah. is done with the NFL. 
I think the NFL right. has, that, has been done with him. That, and I think that's probably more of what it is. I think he's done with the NFL because I think he's come to the re- the realization finally that the NFL might be done with him. And look, the, that's got to be a hit on your pride. You know, oh, you, yeah. you're, you're having one of the most successful years you've had as, as a coach. Uh, you know, you're getting you're getting up there in age. All these jobs come open. You think maybe there's going to be a ton of opportunity for you. And then come to find out there isn't as much opportunity as you thought there would be. That's, you know, that's a tough spot to be in. And I'm not sure that anybody wants to put themselves in that situation again. So I, I will take him at his word that this is it. But I think it's it because I don't know how much of a choice he has in the matter. I, I don't think he's. Yeah, I don't think he's got a choice, man. I really don't. And <laughs> Zach, amen, brother. How the hell did Lovey Smith get an NFL job? You're telling me. Listen, we you said this. You said how many how many NFL franchises teams are going to fill a head coaching role with with coaches that are not as good as Jim Harbaugh? There's one. There's one. There's one. And look, some of these young dudes might might do okay. They might also suck. And I think at least with Jim Harbaugh, you know it's not going to suck. It might be a little weird. It might not be uh, super enjoyable all the time, but he's going to win. He's going to win games. I mean, I would have been surprised if Jim Harbaugh – well, we talked about this before. If Jim if Jim Harbaugh would have gotten the Vikings job, and there's a good chance that Aaron Rodgers is not playing with the Packers next year, Jim Harbaugh, Kirk Cousins, those two receivers, Dalvin Cook, that group, wins the NFC North and goes to the playoffs in his first year there. I don't think there's any question about it. But they decided to go in a different direction. Kevin O'Connell's their head coach. Mike McDonald or uh, – no, what the hell is his name? Mike McDaniels down in Miami has now been hired. And apparently Lovey Smith with his glorious, glorious cotton ball beard. It's phenomenal. It's wild. As, as a man who appreciates the beard. As a man of the beard. You it's like very, that. It's, it's really nice. Um. Anyway – it just, yeah, the Lovey Smith thing kind of feels like, let's just go out and find some dunce cap who we can fire next year, too. Because they dude, they just did that with David Culley. They just hired and fired him in a year. I feel like they're going to do the same thing with Lovey. Like, that's a bad roster. They're going to be awful next year. I don't know, man. Uh, uh, Cedric, be- Cedric, yeah, I, I do. I do think Jim Harbaugh is a better coach than Lovey, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, do you remember when he was at uh, Illinois? Like, what the hell was that? I mean, granted, Michigan is in Illinois, but... It's not, but, like, really, really good coaches. Yeah, there you go, Dwayne. I mean, there's some insight to it. I didn't know you lived in Houston, but, yeah, then you're hearing it all the time. And, dude, this feels like... It's a sensitive subject, but, dude, I don't care. It feels like they hired a black guy because of what happened with Brian Flores in Miami. That's what it feels like. Because they wanted to... He just said it. They have wanted to hire Josh McCown for two years. No head coaching experience, white dude. I don't even think he's in the NFL, right? Dwayne, correct me if I'm wrong. Is he not, like, not even coaching in the NFL and has never coached in the NFL? So this feels like a token hire that they can just kick to the curb and that's it. And, and like, that's the NFL's weird, dude. It's weird. That's why I said from the beginning, I don't think Versace is going to get the job with the Raiders, even though he's done a good job. That's not the guy that they wanted, so he was never going to be hired there full time. It's just strange, dude. I mean, there were nine. Yeah, there you go. He's a high school coach, bro, and they want to hire him. Wild. NFL's a wild place, dude. That's all I'll say. Anyway, we got off on a big tangent there. Holy hell. What, what were we talking? <laughs> what was the question? How am I talking about what? the Texans so hard? Well, the question was whether or not you believe Jim Harbaugh take him at his word. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, but, was, but then we talked about Lovey Smith and how many coaches got hired, and, and right. you know how many of those were not as good as Jim Harbaugh. Let me reel it back in. Let me reel it back in. Reel All right, number back four. In. This I've got two left. They're very. They're basically the same question, though. So this is actually a good way to finish. And honestly, dude, if you hate this question, tell me because Michigan doesn't have an offensive coordinator or a defensive coordinator right now. So this is a little tricky. Okay. In 2021. Michigan finished with the number eight scoring defense in the country. They gave up 17.4 points per game. What will that look like in 2022? Can you even remotely try to answer that question? I think it goes up. I think it's, you know, I think it's what you said. It was 17 points a game. 17.4. 17.4. So I think you're probably, you know, maybe 20, 20 and a half, 21 points per. I mean, I, you know, we, we've talked about this before where I think 
based on what's going to happen with the defense, that the offense is going to have to score more, which I think is why JJ is going to have to get the ball and why they're going to have to open this thing up a lot. And so, yeah, I think they're going to give up more points. I'm surprised that 17 sounds a little bit high. We know that they've got some scrubs the early part of the early part of the season. They're going to take care of business. They might not give up a touchdown the first three weeks of the season, but I think once they settle in, it'll be somewhere around that 20 point mark and they're going to have to score a lot of points. I mean, seven dude in today's age, that's, under 20 is good. That's a yeah. good That's a good number. I mean, it was good for number eight in the whole yeah. country. Only seven teams gave up less points than that. So 10 I'm points with a game at most. I'm <laughs> I'm with you. They're going to be worse. If I mean, it would be a freaking miracle and a shocker if that defense was as good as last year. Can you imagine there, you lose no two way. first rounders on there's the no edge way. and you replace your defensive coordinator? There's no way. And you so improve? it's above 20 points per game. I would say outside of the top 15 probably, but if you can still be in the top 20 to 25 overall on defense, you're good. Like you, you can play enough complimentary football. If you have both units inside the top 20, top 25, you can win a lot of games. Yeah. So that's, they need to, they need to try to be in that wheelhouse. I don't know where it'll, do you want to give a, do you want to give a guess, Chris? They were number eight in the country in 2021. Do you want to throw, I'm just going to document a number so we can kind of where see they'll where they'll finish. Think. Yeah. Just give, I mean, you know what? I'll put them 17th. I think they'll finish 17th right. within the top 20, seventh, still a top 20 defense. Um, but yeah, again, I just, I, it seems impossible that they wouldn't take at least one step back next year. Yeah. It, I, they have to. I mean, they, they just have to. I mean, I thought that the offensive line would take a step back this last year. I think I was going to say, think about it, man. I remember I know, the conversations we had. You, you were saying specifically, there's no way you can have this kind of turnover on your staff or this many additions, and it's successful. And somehow or another, they do it. Absolutely. It always Absolutely. helps when you've got, you know, a Heisman Trophy finalist uh, out there on edge with a stripe down his eye, just eating people left and beating, eating. I don't know where I was going. Eating quarterbacks. Oh, you <laughs> eating. Know dominating consuming enough enough <laughs> enough yeah three first round picks dude hutchinson ojabo dax Hill, all projected to go in the first round i mean that's a lot that's a lot to replace and the same question for number five in 2021 michigan finished with the number 16 scoring offense they scored 35.8 points per game where are they in 2022 how many points a game will they score and where will they rank? What was what was the points per game? 35.8. I mean, it's got to be up over 40. Whoa. 41, 40 and a half. Look at this offense has the potential to be one of the most explosive offenses in the country. They're returning a lot on the offensive line. I know they've lost some pieces there. But if you have the right offensive coordinator calling the plays, they should move the ball pretty consistently and with ease. So, yeah, it should be up over 40 points a game. 52 JJ, minute mark. Look at JJ, Andrell, Donovan, Blake, A- or uh, AJ Henning. I mean, come on. I, I I Cornelius you, Johnson. Eric All. 52 minute mark. I'm, I'm getting a drop of that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you to that mark. Best offense in the country, or whatever you said. Could I'll, be. I'll get it. If they get, get somebody who knows how to drive the damn thing. Number 16 in the country last year. Where are they going to be at? Is this a top 10 offense? It should be. Put it that way. Top 10. Right. If, if, uh, how about this? If Jim Harbaugh does his job, this will be a top 10 offense in 2022. Top 10 offense, 2022. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Bryler. Oh, Ronnie Bell. Look at that. I'm, I'm forgetting Ronnie Bell. That's always how good. Do. That's how we good this. Do. That's how good this offense is. Forgetting about a guy who's probably, you know, he looked like he was well on his way to putting together, you know, becoming a second round pick. I mean, they're loaded. They should score points. Fast, fast, fast. Move the ball down the field. Put the ball in the end zone. Give the people what they want. Points. I I don't disagree, man. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord, Eric. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. I don't. Come on, Come on Eric. It's. It's strong. It's just, there's just no need for that. That is strong. Um, 
Michigan's schedule sets up in a very favorable way for them to do well next year. We just we talked about that kind of at the beginning. I you know the game the the season is essentially four games long. You gotta go. You gotta split them at the least. There's your ten and two. I mean, it's Michigan State, Penn State, Iowa, Ohio State. That's it, man. That's the schedule with a very explosive offense. And, I mean, look, man, they're going to have some talent on defense, but it is very unproven. It could be a new scheme. I mean, not, you know, if I were them, I'd try not to mix that up. You know, try to find somebody who can do the same types of things that McDonald did. Obviously, different pieces. You don't have first-round pass rushers coming off the edge. That – that's going to make or break what Michigan's defense looks like because Michigan's cornerbacks are, they're just not, you know, like Vincent Gray's not going to be, not going to play on Sundays. I don't know if DJ Turner's an NFL cornerback. I mean, Will Johnson's coming in. He's only a freshman. He's never even been on that field in a game yet. I mean, so if, if you suddenly don't, you know, if, if, if teams suddenly were used to struggle to even get to a five step drop can now go five or seven or run play action multiple times, it's going to really make things tough on your secondary, and it wasn't tough on them this year. It just wasn't. So and there's there's questions out. I mean, yeah, there's there's questions out there too. Yeah, Chris, that's a good question. I don't think it's going to be many. I don't think many freshmen are going to play in the secondary. I think you're going to see a lot of Rod Moore, a lot of uh, R.J. Moten, and a lot of D.J. Turner. And you know, and maybe it's Will Johnson at the other cornerback opposite Turner, but maybe not. I mean, he's expected to be really, really good, and uh, you know, he, he was. He was praised up and down. Um, he was praised up and down during his his week of working out down in in Florida for the Under Armour All American Game. I mean, the the, the analysts at Rivals and twenty four seven and everybody were just drooling over how good Will Johnson was at his size, how he was able to move his ball skills. No, I'm I'm in Chase. I'm I'm with you. I think the secondary is going to be okay. It's going to be fine. But not enough to be left on an island or, you know, it, it, it is not the same when quarterbacks cannot even get to their fifth step on a drop and can't run play action and have to max protect on almost every play. It is a different animal when that quarterback can sit back there and read and go through coverages. It doesn't matter who's covering. That's hard to do. I mean, you see that at the NFL, the teams with the best O lines and the most poised quarterbacks who can climb a pocket, tear defenses up week in and week out it's different in college because you know, those guys aren't, aren't as accurate and it's not as much practice time and there's not as many reads built in and there's not as many audibles and pre-snap stuff. I mean, like it's all part of it, but you don't want to put a true freshman cornerback in Will Johnson and DJ Turner, who, I mean, honestly, he's only played one year. You just don't want to put him in those kinds of situations. So I don't know. We'll see what it looks like. I mean, it's what we talked about all year long. Once we or once the year ended, sorry, all all off season long so far, replacing Hutchinson and Ojabo is impossible to do. It is. Um, did Mike say that on the podcast? Maybe it was after you left. He or maybe I don't know. Maybe you were here. He said that a Michigan defense has never had to replace that many sacks ever. Uh, I, I don't remember him saying that, but I uh, that doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, not extremely and not productive, from, not just from two guys which is all it was this year, right. the whole defense. They have never had to replace 20, whatever it was, 25 and a half, 26. Right. Well, uh, well the, and we talked two. about it. When you watch Hutchinson and Ojabo play, yeah, they were getting set. I mean, but how, how much were they impacting every single play out there? I feel like when Aiden Hutchinson right. was on the field, he had an impact on every single play. And so that's what guys like, you know, Mike Morris, Braden McGregor, uh, Jalen Harrell, like somebody is going to have to step up in a very big way. Nobody saw Ojabo coming prior sure. to the season. Nobody saw. Nope. So those guys laid the blueprint. I think Aiden Hutchinson walked into the staff and said, I want you to ring me out every day, right? He was committed to going through this process that was going to lead to greatness. And I think a lot of guys followed along. And so, yeah, we don't know who those guys are going to be, but they're certainly capable of it. And they've got enough time to get there by the time we kick off September, whatever. Just get in Dwayne, the damn gym. Work. Wayne, that's a fair point. That Michigan State secondary is one of the worst in the country, and they won 11 games. You got a point. You do have a point. I, I still think it's fair to say the defense at Michigan will take a step back, but you are right. Given that schedule, you've seen a you, – you can win. 
You can win with a poor secondary. Nice when you got Kenneth Walker too. If the offense can be, can score points, and that's again that comes back to, you know, what we would hope to see out of Michigan's offense with whoever the quarterback is. Most people will will say JJ McCarthy, but <clears throat> anyway, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I'm I'm curious to see when this staff is finalized. What it looks like. It sounds like Michigan is going to be hiring a new safeties coach. Fully expect Ron Bellamy to move from safeties to wide receivers where he was originally hired to coach. You bring in a, do, a new DC, you give, you let him have some input on who he wants as a safeties coach, and you keep it moving. <clears throat> and after last year, Jim Harbaugh should get a lot of credit because he did an outstanding job of identifying guys that will work well together. And, you know, Michigan did what they did uh, all year long. So we'll see, man. We will see. Chris? I don't know, man. You got anything else? I mean, we're at an hour. Like we said, we, we didn't think we were going to get there. We didn't think we would get there, and we somehow got there. So, no, man, I think I think it was a good show. It's good to be back. It's it's good to be back in the state of Michigan. You know, I kind of felt like I was out of my element down there in Florida, you know, trying not to sweat my ass off every day. So it's good to be back in the mitten here. Uh, Matt, I'll answer this on the way out here. Cole Cabana, um, Three to four star kid. I think he's a three star on twenty four seven. A four star on rivals. Fast, um, fast, fast. Fast kid. Not not the biggest in the world. You know he's gonna look. He's gonna be a guy that you do some of the stuff they do with AJ Henning and Roman Wilson uh, out of the backfield, jet sweep kind of stuff. He is a running back. I mean, he's not a wide receiver, but he, he can catch it well. He's he's been a return guy. Um, Appreciate you, Tony. But you know we'll see we'll see what he's all about. I mean. I was going to say this the other day. I never, and recruiting was my world, dude. I used to hate when people would say, like, oh, who gives a shit about recruiting? But I, like, I'm like, dude, I, I do. That's what I do for a job. But Michigan had multiple kids committed in that 2022 class that did not end up being parts of the class. And, and several of them were in state kids. For whatever reason, you see it more with in state kids, I feel like. I'm not saying that's what's happening here. But again, just something to keep an eye on. You know, we'll see. He he really likes the idea of playing for Mike Hart. He was a Michigan State lean for a while. Michigan goes in and gets him. That's a nice get. So we'll see what it we'll see what it looks like down the down the stretch and as a senior and if he puts on a little weight and how he plays. But scored a lot of touchdowns, makes big plays, fast kid. You know, you can worse. Who the yeah. fuck is this Eric guy? Who is this guy? Who this? This fuck whoever this Eric guy is, he he is my TFG. Screw screw what I said about the the Pro Bowl. This Eric guy has been pissing me off in the comments the entire I even, show. I didn't even see my. The only reason oh. he sticks out, he's pissed. We can we can close the show. We'll close. You have a C minus face, brah. That's what I say to that. This fucking guy. And why is it always people that have like weird weird profile pictures that always say shit like that? Dude, is that an Oregon duck? What are you even doing? What here? that is. Oh. Go hike somewhere. Go hug a pine tree. Eric. Eric. Look at that, Eric. <laughs> this fucking guy. Let's Eric. Let's go for a minute and talk shit on this guy. We don't really do that very often. Eric. You know what else is a forced touch? I have fewer shits. <laughs> you know what else is a forced touch? Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you have fewer chins than me? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I eat good. And I get paid good. You have fewer. Good. You have fewer monies than me. Ooh. <laughs> I'm uh, just. I'm gonna do it, dude. I'm gonna. Do, I'm gonna do it. Come on, come on, Eric. Let's hear we it, bro. We don't make very much. Let's hear it. We don't Let's do hear it, Eric. Well. <laughs> I got. I got. I got time today, bro. I got time. <laughs> I'm at home right now by myself. I'm. I got time, dog. All right, Eric. We'll 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 let him go. Let's let him go. No, well, you got to get back to Ozark. You got to get back to Ozark. I well, got to get back to whatever the hell like, I got going. I got a couple. So. I got a couple bets rolling. We'll see what that looks like. I don't know. Show us your face. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to be here, but you're here. What are you? What are you doing, dude? We're That's off the, the rails. I Eric, mean, we're Eric. We're giving you the platform, Eric. Eric, Eric, I'll send you a link, bro. You can come on and talk to us. Come on. I'll send you the link. You can click on it and come on and talk to us. Offers on the table. I'll stop the trendy music. You can come on and speak to us like a man. You can put your face on the screen. You can put your name up there, dog. I'm right here, bro. Now come on, let's go. Now you see what you did. Eric, let's go, dude. You did, Eric. Damn it, Eric. I'm ready. You know what? Hey, hey, let's do that. 
the new name for like an asshole on the show. We'll just call him an Eric. You being an Eric. <laughs> just be an Eric. Come on, bro. There's Eric. enough Eric's out there. Eric, do you want the link? Hit me in the com- hit me in the comments, dude. I'll send you the link right now. We can have a chat, dude. We can have a long chat. I got all night, dude. I got all his, night. His family's gone. He will do it. He will do it. Let's go. Eric. 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 By the way, uh, no, Andrew, that's JJ Andrell and Donovan Edwards. Don't forget, Donovan Edwards is going to be joining them as well. So oh, it's gonna be we got three a, of them. Oh, we got a new to- we got a change in we got a change of heart. I'm uh, shocked. See? see I'm shocked, bro. He likes us. I'm shocked that you that you cowered and bowed down when I gave you the platform to come on and speak like a real man, like an adult, like a human. I'm going to cut all this off of the actual podcast. Please do. This is fun, this is fun right now. Eric, does your last name start with a D? Are your initials E-D? Come on, Eric. Let's talk, bro. I'm ready. He says he's the only one in the comments because because uh, it's on YouTube. There's a lot of people in the comments on Facebook, bro. Like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. How, how did this happen? I don't it's know. My, it's my fault. I, you, I, I, yeah, gave, I, didn't I even gave him know. attention. I gave him attention. It's my fault. I'll take the blame for this. I didn't even Damn know it. he was there. And then you were like, you wanted to call him out. You wanted to, you wanted to go there. Eric. <laughs> All right, we're going to end it now. Dude, we went through like four cycles of the ending music. I'm just going to go watch basketball. All right, everybody. Take care. See ya.